In this video, we're going to create a 3D model from scratch using SRAM's member definition tool. And when defining members, we actually have four different options that we can use. We can click the start and end joints of a member. If those joints already exist, we can click on them. If they're grid line intersections, we can use that instead. We can also click one point and extrude the member from that first point that we selected using the one joint method for member definition. We just specify the direction and the length of the extrusion. And a second joint will be created after that extrusion. Third option is one we've seen already in these videos where we can define a 2D pattern with grids or selected joints. Just like we saw before, we did an example with cross bracing. And the fourth option is to intersect existing members. So imagine that we have two parallel members that aren't touching, and we want to create an intersection uh, with a member. We could use the geometry of those two members to draw our new member. Now we're going to look into an example here where we're going to create a model from scratch using S-Frame. And I'm just going to go into the new 3D wizard. You guys have seen this already, so I'm just going to go from scratch example. I'm going to use the metric defaults as before for input and output units. Stick with my regular uh, tolerances and building codes and just open a model from scratch. For those of you that would prefer not to have to use this wizard every single time you open up a new file, it is possible to bypass that. You just have to go to settings. Preferences. And from the ensuing dialog here, you have the option to bypass the startup wizard. And if you check this, it won't pop up every single time. So we're going to turn on a grid to help us with our modeling. So we're going to go to this grid drop down and look at the one meter spacing grid. This one's already been created for me, and I know that each grid line is one meter apart from each other in the x and y axis. And I have a total of 10 grid lines in each direction. Now, if I select the member definition tool, this is what I'm going to use to define members. I can use the member definition tool and either choose the two joints method or the one joint method. I'm going to choose the one joint method. And in this case here, I'm going to select to generate the member in the positive z axis. And I'm going to generate it at a certain length. That length will be 5 meters. So this is going to help me draw columns because they're going to go in the positive z-axis of the global coordinate system. So I'll draw one right here at the origin of the coordinate system. And I'll draw another one that's another 4 meters away. So I'm just going to count the grid lines 1, 2, 3, 4, and I have another grid line there. So, or another column there. I'm going to then connect these two columns at the top with a beam. And I'll still use the member definition tool for that and use the two joints method. And when I left click on this option, then I just have to left click the top of each column to draw in a member in between. So all members need to have joints at the start and the end. Those joints can either be existing points that were defined at the joint tool or grid line intersections. Now something that's interesting about when we define these elements in SRAM is that they're also described in numerical format as well. And we can adjust them within a numerical interface. If we click on the spreadsheet window down at the bottom of the left of the screen here, we actually have the whole model available in a spreadsheet interface. I can see the joint locations. So I have four joints in my model. These are the coordinates. And I can adjust any one of these, and it will update my model. I can also import and export from Excel or Microsoft Access. I can see my members. So I have three members, their start joints, their end joints. I don't have any sections right now. It's using the default material, and it's assuming that the member is a beam. We'll get more into that later on. You also notice that we have our releases here. So we have our MX, MY, and MZ releases, which are all fixed, as well as an FX, which is an axial release that we can set to be pinned or fixed. Um, you probably wouldn't want to release the axial degree of freedom on both ends of the member, because then it would be unstable. 
Now, this isn't really too relevant to this uh, exercise, but we're just bringing it up since it is something we see. Now, at this stage, we're going to use this model in later videos as well. So we're going to save this model. I'm going to go to File, Save As, and it's going to ask me to save this model somewhere. So I'm just going to go ahead and give it a name. I'll just call this uh, Frame Start. And you notice that it's saving the file as a .tel file, a tel file. This is an ASCII format. You can actually open up this file type within Notepad as well if you want to open it uh, and view it in its uh, Notepad format. So now we've saved this file. You can see that we have the name shown here. And we can continue working on it in subsequent videos.